New flagship GPUs from Intel are coming and they could deliver game-changing performance for a fraction of the price of the competition. But as is often the case with this troubled silicon giant, things aren't quite as straightforward as they seem. So today we're talking about Battle Mage, Intel's second gen graphics cards that have been much anticipated ever since Alchemist, the first gen Intel Arc GPUs, launched a couple of years back. The first gen ARCs had a rough start, with some compatibility issues making life difficult for early adopters, but since then they've emerged as a decent budget option for anyone wanting to take the plunge and bet on the blue team for their discrete desktop GPU. Battlemage aka XE2 is the second in a series of four currently planned generations of GPU architectures from Intel following alphabetic gamery sounding codenames. It's actually already shipped in Intel's Series 2 Core Ultra laptop CPUs in the form of those chips into integrated GPU tiles, and by all accounts the graphics performance of the new Lunar Lake chips has been one of the more impressive features in what is a well-reviewed chunk of silicon. So some top-level features that we already know about that include an up to 50% performance uplift versus the first-gen Alchemist, plus new ray tracing cores along with a new VVC engine for more efficient video streaming. And the new GPUs should be built on a 4 nanometer processor from TSMC, although some rumours suggest 5 nanometers is still a possibility. So let's dive into the new discrete graphics cards based on Battle Mage, of which at least two are currently known. It's worth noting that we're going to be talking about codenames here. The actual GPUs themselves will likely go to market as ARC B750 or B770 or 790 or something similar. We don't know the exact branding just yet. With that in mind, the first is what's believed to be the mid-tier Battle Mage, codenamed G21, which popped up on Geekbench recently, running the Geekbench 6 OpenCL benchmark. This was picked up by BenchLeaks and WCCF Tech, which reports it'll have 20 XE2 cores, 12 gigabytes of memory, and 2850 MHz clock speeds. So that's fewer cores than the previous gen mid-tier ARC, but are much higher frequencies than we've seen before. It's worth remembering you can't really compare apples to apples with the number of cores anyway, going from XE to XE2, because of the extra ALUs in the second gen architecture. Basically means more computing juice in the same number of cores. An earlier report based on information gained from GFX DRM suggests a maximum of 24 XE2 cores on die, and we've seen previous rumours of cards featuring G21 with 16 cores as well. VRAM reportedly clocks in at 12 gigabytes of 19 gigabit per second GDDR6 on a 192-bit bus for 456 gigabytes per second of bandwidth, faster memory than the top-end first-gen ARC A770, but with slightly less overall bandwidth because of the narrower bus. And the benchmarks line up with that. Based on those leaked OpenCL numbers, we can see the mid-tier Battle Mage card G21 with 20 cores, landing somewhere between the ARC A750 and RTX 4060, and falling short of the high-end ARC 770 from the previous generation. Now, bear in mind this will be an engineering sample board, and it definitely will be running in development drivers as well. That last point bears remembering, particularly since Intel had such trouble with optimization of its drivers for the first gen Arc GPUs at launch. But still, it's a starting point, and maybe with final drivers, and depending on which games or apps you're using, perhaps that mid tier Battle Mage card will be pushing closer to the level of an RTX 4060. Next up is the Battlemage G31, believed to be the higher end part which was unearthed in documents on an Intel technical website over the summer. Details for this card are a bit more nebulous, but YouTuber Red Gaming Tech has collated some ballpark numbers of what to expect, including details from Twitter leaker Squash Bionic, which points to 32 XE2 cores and 16GB of GDDR6 memory. The performance target for that higher end card could reportedly be as high as Nvidia's RTX 4070, and given Intel's performance to price pedigree with its first gen ARC, that could make this a really interesting product. Finally, early reports had suggested a Battlemage G10 GPU also being in the works, with conflicting information out there in early 2024 as to whether it's an enthusiast-grade card with either 56 or 64 XE2 cores, or a much less interesting entry-level GPU that sits somewhere below G21 in the lineup. Either way, reports over the summer have hinted that the G10 model apparently has been cancelled, and we've seen little information out there to contradict that since then. All the more recent leaks have focused on just G21 and G31. But with Intel's claim of up to a 50% performance bump compared to the earlier Alchemist generation, and the performance we've already seen from this architecture in Intel's latest laptop chips, new Battle Mage cards could bring some heat to the mid-range space. Between the upcoming RTX 5000 series launch, of which the 5070 looks set to be the most interesting card, and AMD's RDNA 4, which also is set to target the mid to high-end segment, early 2025 could be a great time to buy a mid-tier GPU. 
That said, there's a lot we don't know about the actual performance levels of Battle Mage, especially considering the rocky start that Alchemist had with all kinds of driver-related drama. Leaked benchmarks of the new GPUs are few and far between, and to get a clear picture of the kind of value proposition Battle Mage represents, we're going to need to see some real apples-to-apples -apples comparisons that just don't exist right now outside of Intel's labs. And even after more numbers inevitably leak, there are other variables to consider, like performance with XESS, Intel's AI upscaled rendering tech, on these new GPUs that are somewhat of a mystery at present. So bottom line, the smart money seems to be on just those two Battle Mage cards breaking cover initially, G21 and G31, and don't expect either of them to challenge a super high-end $1,000 to $1,500 plus card when Battle Mage eventually launches. Speaking of which, Nvidia and AMD are both expected to debut their next generation of GPUs in early 2025, with the green team in particular going big at CES 2025 in Las Vegas, where CEO and leather jacket enthusiast Jensen Huang will be hosting a keynote. Earlier rumors had tipped a late 2024 launch for Battle Mage, but let's face it, by the time we're making this video, there's not a whole lot of 2024 left in which to release much of anything. And a recent report from Moore's Law is Dead points to desktop XE2 GPUs arriving within the the next four months as of late October 2024. That's somewhat contradicted though by a more recent social post by reliable Chinese leaker Battle Pig Upgrades positing a December launch, so who knows. Anything we say around pricing is going to be speculation, but assuming Intel is targeting the RTX 4070 or maybe even 4070 Super for its higher-end Battle Mage GPU, the $500 mark would make for a tantalizing proposition, definitely falling within the affordable GPU segment. Competition in the GPU space is a good thing, not least given the dominance of Nvidia at the high end. But there is uncertainty around the future of discrete GPUs from Intel based on a few more recent reports. A late-breaking report once again from Moore's Law is Dead suggests that if Battle Mage flops at retail, then Intel could cancel the third gen Arc desktop GPU project, codenamed Celestial. That wouldn't necessarily mean no more Intel GPUs, just that they'd be limited to integrated GPUs like XE2 in the Lunar Lake laptop chips or Alchemist in the Arrow Lake desktop chips. Board manufacturers too are said to be not too optimistic about the sales prospects of Battle Mage cards, with fewer said to be willing to take a chance on the new chips than was previously the case with Alchemist. Only Biostar is mentioned as a potential board partner for the new Intel GPUs. And then there are recent comments from Intel's CEO himself, which seem much more bullish on the prospects of integrated GPUs versus discrete Intel graphics cards. So there's a lot riding on Intel's new desktop Battle Mage GPUs. Again, competition is a good thing, so I'm definitely hoping Intel can make it work and continue to be that much needed third player in the GPU space. Ultimately though, only time will tell, and we'll know more in early 2025 when these new cards eventually break cover. That's it for now. If you've used an Intel ARC card over the past couple of years, or you're looking forward to some next-gen Battle Mage action arriving in the coming months, then be sure to share your thoughts down in the comments, and subscribe for more coverage going into 2025 and beyond. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.